You may remember that when Rotor Brush was added to After Effects, you also got a brand new effect called Matte Refine Matte. This was the edge cleanup portion of the Rotor Brush effect, the ability to decontaminate edge color, to motion blur, moving edges, etc. And you could apply it after anything that created an alpha channel, including keyed footage, etc. Well, that effect has now been renamed Refine Hard Matte to take into account the binary Alpharon nature of the underlying matte. All the parameter name changes I discussed in the last movie apply to this effect as well. Well, with the addition of the Refine Edge tool, we now have a new effect called Refine Soft Matte. And this is the edge correction section of the Refine Edge tool. In other words, a much better tool for dealing with partially transparent areas. For example, here I have a keyed scene, and it's not a bad key. However, it does run into trouble when there's a lot of fast movement and motion blur. Even though we do have partial transparency on some of these motion blurred areas, if I turn the key light effect off, you'll see that the motion blur along the hands, etc., has a much longer trail than I'm seeing in the final keyed result. You'll also see that the edges have gotten choked in a little bit to create a good key all around this footage. Well, I can further clean up those edges now using Refine Soft Matte. So go Matte, Refine Soft Matte, and I need to make some adjustments. Most effects and other techniques for creating an alpha channel do leave you color beyond the edges of your alpha channel. It just so happens the key light does not. Well, there's a couple ways of getting around that. One is you can change the view pop-up from final result to intermediate result. The good news is that keeps the color beyond the alpha channel. The bad news is, is that removes the color despill portion of key light. So it's kind of a mixed bag. They also have this option called unpremultiply result, but frankly, I've had some mixed results using that particular choice. So I'm going to leave that off for now. If you're using a keying effect other than key light, which blows away the color information, you can go ahead and use the channel set channels effect and instead take your original red, green, and blue from your underlying source layer, don't touch your alpha channel and place that before Refine Soft Matte. Again, you would lose any of your color spill built into the effect, but this gives you color information for Refine Soft Matte to work with. But I'm gonna delete this and use the intermediate result from Key Light. You can immediately see that we have much longer, better motion blur trails around things such as the hand. I'll turn off all the effects. You see the underlying footage, and now the treated footage. This is a much better edge treatment tacked onto our keyer. Most of these parameters will look familiar. Smooth, feather, contrast, shift edge, and shadow reduction are exactly the same as for the new combined rotor brush and refine edges effect. You'll see that you do get some decontaminate edge color and calculation of motion blur. Don't know if I necessarily need even more in this particular example, but it's something to try depending on your footage, because there you get to choose what the actual shutter angle is, etc. But my keyed and refined footage has pretty good transparency to begin with. And you can also decontaminate some edge color. With it turned off, you'll see I've got green in these motion blurred areas. With it turned on, now I have nice natural color in those areas. Doesn't quite creep all the way into areas such as this person's shirt, but it does well for the partially transparent areas as opposed to the opaque areas. Since you don't actually get to use the refine edge tool to define the areas that are partially transparent. Instead, you have a fixed radius that goes all the way around your object. If it's too small, you'll see that I'm starting to cut into the motion blur sections, but you don't wanna make it too big because you might introduce some artifacts. I'm gonna pick a happy medium where I filled in the opaque areas of the actors and have nice motion blur trails. And if you want a visual confirmation of what's going on, you can view that edge region. It looks like I've captured all those motion blurred areas. I'll turn that back off again. Again, you can see how much better this is than just using keying on its own. You may need to do some despill. I'll go to effect, keying, spill suppressor. The one built in After Effects is fair, not fantastic. I use the same key that the color keyer used, pulled a little bit too much out of his shirt. So I'll back it off until I have a good intermediate mix. This is his original shirt color. This is after, maybe a little bit more out of there, right around there. 
And thanks to the addition of Refine Soft Matte, I have a much better end result and key than I did before. So that's another tool to keep in mind when you're working with particularly tricky footage or cases where something may already have been hand masked, but didn't do a great job on blurred edges.